Hello, everybody, and we are in for our Real Help in Real Time session today. Um, I want to thank Delaware State News and the wonderful crew for being with us. And I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you guys so you can start your presentation. Great. Yeah, so my name is Conrad Laprade. Um, I'm the ad director at the Delaware State News and at our um, newly created uh, digital agency, Galaxy 110. Um, my hope today is to just have kind of a, an open conversation and dialogue about what it means to market as we go into the brave new world, um, as, as we're kind of coming out of where we are now and, and adjusting to what a new normal might be. Um, and so we've brought um, from the Delaware State News three people who are gonna really help us um, see that. So um, first of all, uh, Marty Valenia, who is our Director of Digital, and, and Marty will just be talking, he's gonna talk for about 10 minutes about um, digital and um, what, what things mean now um, as we're adjusting to where, where we're going to be and kind of coming out, what that looks like. And so Marty's gonna talk about digital. Um, Heather Krieger, who is our, um, our Director of Marketing, and Heather's gonna talk about marketing um, as it, as it relates to um, as it relates to the new normal. And I'm really excited about that and um, just being able to kind of think about, you know, what, what that looks like. Heather's also gonna mention some social media tips for us. She um, has got a lot of knowledge on social media and I'm really excited to hear, hear that. And then um, Tonda um, Parks, who um, does some other things for us. I have no idea even what her title is. It's the director of lots of stuff. Um, but, but Tonda is going to help us think about marketing virtually and um, she had to look up the term virtual and think about what that meant and I think she even has a definition now. So um, I'm really excited to hear that at, at the end. And so that, that's, that's our goal is, um, is, to get the, um, is to get all of us kind of be able to, to talk about those pieces. And as we're talking, if you have questions, please type them in the chat box to us. Um, at the end, my hope is Marty, Heather, Tonda, we'll each go about 10 minutes, and then we'll have maybe 10 or so minutes at the end to answer any questions that, that you have. We've received some questions already, so um, some of this, you know, will we'll come from those questions. But um, if you have questions and, that you want to ask, please ask us, and, and I'd love to um, love to talk to you about them. So um, I'm going to turn it over first to Marty, who's going to talk to us about digital. Thank you, Conrad. Uh, as, as Conrad said, my name is Marty Valenia. I'm the Director of Digital for uh, Galaxy 110 and uh, Delaware State News. And today I'm just going to talk briefly about using some of your existing digital marketing capabilities um, during this unusual time. Um, first and foremost, communication is the most important thing uh, that you can do during this time, especially with your customers. If, if people have gone to your website or given you their email address or liked something you posted on Facebook, then they'll be happy to hear from you at this point in time. Things aren't normal, but, but hearing from a business that you frequent on a regular basis is a welcome form of nor normalcy. So what do we want to do? Um, first is, is, is let's use your website. Uh, you, you know, let's update it constantly. You know, if you have change of hours or different uh, product offerings or you're using take, takeout or curbside delivery now, or do you have to make an appointment even? Oh, so what are you doing differently now? You want to put all those things on your website. Um, it's also important to let people know what you're doing to keep employees safe and your customers safe. Again, communicate that through your website. If these aren't things that you can easily change on your website, I think it's important to be able to do this. If they're not, then it may be something to consider of, of trying to get a website that, that you, know, you can use more uh, frequently and, when, and be of more use to you. Also, um, e-commerce is something. Can you sell your products or services online? Um, is this something you can do now or are your competitors doing it? If not, if it's not something you have, it also may be something you want to consider moving forward. Um, next is, is email. Uh, many of you have been collecting customer emails for years and have a really nice size database. Let's use this database to let your customers know about all, all that you're doing. What about your changes? Uh, again, things I mentioned about that you want to put on your website, you can also put in an email to your customers, hours, products, takeout, pickup, do I need to make an appointment? What are you doing to make people safe? Um, these are all things you can communicate with your customer. They'll be happy to get an email from you during this period of time. 
Um, your list, of course, will only reach your current customers or customers that are familiar with you. Um, there are also programs out there where you can target an audience that, that you haven't dealt with previously. Um, it may be a good way to, to get new customers or make new, new connections during these times. So, um, you know, these are things that you need to be doing. The more you can communicate with customers and potential customers, the more it's a good thing. Uh, Facebook, social media, as, as Conrad mentioned, Heather will talk more about this. But again, uh, from a simple point of view, it's an easy place to get your word out about anything that you're doing, anything you're doing differently, anything that you, any offers, anything new. Again, I can't stress enough, communication um, is key during this period of time and using all these digital platforms is, is the way to do it. Um, the other thing that I think is important, and but simple, is uh, you know, SC, simple local search engine optimization. Uh, you know, that's a big term and it's a moving target and, and people are scared of it sometimes. And certainly it's not something that can happen overnight, but there are a few quick things and immediate things you can do to help yourself when people are searching for your products and services. Um, first thing and most important probably is, is cl claiming and verifying your Google My Business page. Um, it's a great way um, to make sure that your business are, comes up when people do that search for your products or services. Um, it's also a place that you can put all these changes in all that, you that you're doing. It's a mini website almost. You can, again, put your hours, your offers, anything new, pictures, um, all these things can be done on your Google My Business page. And, and most importantly, it'll help you get found when people do that search. People in Dover, people in King County, people wherever, if they're doing a search for your business or for your products and services, um, this will help you get found. Um, the other thing is um, we, I know we at the Dollar State News have a site that's uh, specifically for businesses that are open now. It's open for business site. Um, it's free, you can submit your business. You can, and again, it's a place where you can put some vital information, any changes that you're doing. Um, but we're not the only ones um, that have thought of this. Um, there's other media companies out there doing the exact same thing. And I would recommend getting on as many of these sites as possible. People use them as a source of information, um, a reference page for who's open and who's not. Please take advantage of them. Whether it's our site and any other site that you can get on that have these pages, um, by all means, take advantage of them and get the word out that you're open and, and, and whatever changes you may have. Uh, the last thing is as we get closer to reopening and the transition from being shut down to phase one to phase two, let people know uh, how this affects your business, how this affects your customers. Uh, keep them up to date on what you're doing. And um, again, if there's hour changes, if there's you have to make an appointment, um, let them know the process, make it easy for your customers. Um, you know, use your email, use your website, use social media, let people know how, um, how they're going to be affected and how you're going to be affected as we go into this grand, uh, grand reopening, reopening. So um, those are the important things I think that you can use uh, easily, easily and the digital uh, platforms that you will probably already have access to. So Conrad, ba um, back to you. Thank you. Yeah, so one thing, Marty, you said that I just wanted to hit on for a minute as we think about this is um, thinking about the email list that you've collected. Those are customers who have said, yes, we want to receive information from you. You are sending them information that they want to receive. And I think that's really important as we think about how do we market digitally? How do we alert people? They've said, we're interested in your updates. And so, you know, Take advantage of that in the right way. Um, so that's great. And, and I'm excited to now to, as we move from sort of thinking about how do I advertise and market digitally to Heather's going to talk to us kind of overall digitally and then also um, on the social media side. And I'm really excited to hear um, what she has to say and um, some of the tips that, that she has for us. So Heather, I'm going to turn it over to you. Hi, good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us. Um, so the, the, uh, the biggest thing that you want to think about right now is don't stop promoting your business. Okay, I know that maybe if you're closed or whatever that the first um, 
urge is to stop everything, but don't stop marketing your business. Um, you know, continue doing as much as you can. Um, the Harvard School of Business did a study of three global recessions, and what they found was that the businesses that um, thrived um, during and also even after the recessions are those that did a mix of marketing, um, research and development, and invested in assets. So look at what you've got going on with your business. Are there new assets that you need to be thinking about and bringing in? Are there new services or new products or whatever that you, that you should be looking at and trying to bring on board? So doing as much of that as you can can help ensure that you're gonna do well um, during these hard times and then continue doing well afterwards too. So um, I've divided my presentation today kind of into three parts and the first one is you're messaging your customers and your partners. So like Marty said earlier, you wanna make sure that, um, that you're reaching out to people. They wanna hear from you. It brings some normalcy to their life. So make sure that you're reaching out to your customers. Um, think about what your message is that you're saying to them based on where we are at, at that time um, in with our pandemic, for lack of a better word. Um, so think about where we are and what that message should be. Um, be careful talking too much. If you don't have to, don't mention the pandemic, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, and all those things that, you know, frankly, a lot of people are becoming kind of weary of. Um, so just, you know, if, if it's something that you have to bring up, of course, by all means, or if it's key to your business, yes, of course you would bring it up. But, um, you know, try to avoid using those terms, talk about the new normal, um, and even just branding messages are really important to, to keep out there right now. So um, reach out to your existing customers, um, find out how they're doing, call them or send them a personal email um, just to check on how they are don't use that as a time to sell. That's not a time that you want to be selling to them. Um, also, look at partnership opportunities. So think about other businesses and organizations that might um, service or, or have the same prospective customers that you do that would be willing to partner with you on things. So are they uh, you know, and it could be a variety of things. I mean, retail, of course, there's there's plenty of things with retail, different partnership opportunities. I've seen ice cream places partnering with coffee shops to do Mother's Day gift baskets or whatever. But, um, you know, think about who your prospective customers are and what other businesses serve those kinds of customers and see if you can work out some partnerships that maybe would include sharing email addresses for your, with your customers or asking them to send out an email to their customers about your business um, and, and what's going on with your business. So that could be a really great um, partnership opportunity for you. Um, if, you if you sell merchandise or, or have a need to get um, information out to the customers too and maybe your business is closed, look for a partner that's that their business is open and see if they're willing to sell your merchandise or feature your service or whatever at their place of business. Um, I saw a business in Chestertown um, do that where um, they're, they were a cheese shop. So they were open because they're, you know, selling food items and two doors away from them was a home goods store that wasn't able to be open. And so they were selling some of their merchandise in the cheese shop, particularly targeted for Mother's Day. So um, lots of opportunities for that. Um, and then, of course, if you're the mem member of the Chamber of Commerce or any other business organizations, reach out to them for some marketing ideas. Um, I know that they've got a, a lot of different ways, too, that they can help you. So the second part I like to call your storefront. And even though you may not have a, a brick and mortar store, um, you still have a storefront, like is what I like to call it, that you present to customers. And that can be your, your phone message at your business. When people call in, they hear a message. And does that message sound current to them? Or does that message sound like something you recorded six months ago and you leave them wondering, are they really still open those hours? And if I leave a message, is someone really going to pick up this message or am I never going to hear from them because they're all working from home and nobody's checking the messages in the office or whatever. So make sure that you're giving them information that it reassures them that yes, someone's getting this message. Um, I heard about a car wash recently that they're changing their message every day 
and saying, you know, today's Tuesday, May 12th, and you know, we're open from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. It's senior day or or whatever. So they're they're updating their message every single day. That might be a lot for some businesses to do, particularly if you have multiple phone lines, but um, you know, check your phone messages and make sure that they sound um, current to people. And um, the other thing too, if you know, make sure that if you have a place of business where people are walking in the door, are your hours correct on your door? Um, do you need to put something, some sort of information about we're closed right now, but here's where you can get some information about how to do business with us or give them a website on the door or whatever. If the hours on the door are correct and you really are open at those hours right now, put up a sign that says these are our current hours, you know, we're happy to, we're looking forward to seeing you. Make sure that the front of your business, the parking lot and everything looks well kept. All your company vehicles look well kept. If somebody pulls into your parking lot or your place of business and they see that the grass needs to be mowed and there's weeds growing up through the you know, flower bed and there's a dead plant in the front window or whatever, they're gonna wonder, geez, are they even open? Um, and not only are they gonna wonder that, but they're gonna wonder how well are they gonna take care of things at this place of business once they do reopen. So um, you wanna make sure that you're sending out a really positive message to people when they come to visit your place of business, even if you're closed. Um, so, and like Marty said, make sure that you update your website, all your um, online listings and directories and all that kind of stuff, make sure that they're up to date. Um, then the next part is your marketing plan. So make sure that you're constantly reassessing your marketing plan. You know, what's going on? What's the best way for me to reach people right now based on, you know, what stage or phase we're at with um, restrictions. So make sure that you're constantly looking at that and be open to new marketing tools and technology um, and using them to help reach out to your customers. Send out press releases to and photos to the local newspaper to you know, recognize your staff that has been going above and beyond, or maybe they've gotten some awards. Maybe your business has gotten an award recently. Um, talk about new products and services, new hires maybe that you've had. Um, if you've got um, uh, any kind of community support that you're doing too is really great to highlight right now. So um, post regularly on social media, of course. So make sure that you're doing that. Figure out the best platform to reach the people that you wanna reach and learn about it. Right now, if you've got a little bit of extra time, maybe you do, maybe, maybe you have less time than ever, um, but look at um, social media um, and, and figure out which one's best for your business and um, learn how to use it. I mean, it changes constantly. Every day you think you've got it figured out, the next day Facebook is all different and you know, whatever. So um, figure out the best way to use it and um, you know, now's a good time to be doing that. So make sure that you keep your message interesting and informing for people. Um, have some fun, but also be engaged. Make sure that if somebody posts a comment or something on on um, your Facebook or if they comment on something on your Instagram or Twitter or whatever, that you're responding to it. People wanna want that um, engagement. So that's really why it's called social media. So make sure that you're using it that way. Um, videos are much better at engaging viewers. Um, don't feel like you have to get all kinds of expensive equipment to do videos. Uh, you know, our phones are pretty sophisticated these days and you can shoot some great videos with your phone. Get a tripod if you're gonna be shooting for an extended period of time so that your, your image isn't wiggling and um, use a microphone if you're concerned about background noise and you can get really cheap microphones from Amazon. Um, if you're using still photography, that's great. It's still, you know, it's still of course very important. Make sure it's clean, crisp, interesting and um, buy ads on social media. So um, that's the biggest thing is don't feel like you can just post for free all the time and you're gonna get all kinds of likes because you're gonna post something for free and get eight likes. Um, so, you know, really work on that. Like Marty said, send out email blasts to um, your customers, not only the ones that you, that you have already their information for, but look into um, reaching out to prospective customers, maybe that are that are your target audience, but you don't have that. Um, put together special offers to thank and um, entice customers for when you're going to be opening up. And there's my time's up. Oops, sorry. Um, and um, 
also turn everyday things that you do at your business into an event and put it on social media that way. So if you've you know, had a presentation of new merchandise or you wanna do a tour of your office or you wanna show people working at home and their pets or something like that, just kind of these everyday things are fun things to turn into an event and post on um, social media. So maybe you have a Friday um, you know, happy hour with the dogs or whatever. So that could be really fun and interesting for people to watch and laugh at for a brief time. So anyway, ha happy to, um, you know, have you all again here and, uh, you know, be, feel free to reach out to me if there's anything that I can do to help you. Back to Thanks, you. Heather. Thanks, Heather. That was great. Um, I think it is, social media is one of the most confusing pieces. And I think what I appreciate about having you um, talk about this in the context of marketing is that we recognize social media is often a signpost, right? It's the ability to market your business online and you're doing the same sort of things that you do to market your business. Typically, you're doing those on social media. So um, I think that's a really good point. Um, two things Heather said I want to uh, just point out, and I think it's super important for us to think about. The first one is um, she talked about marketing during a recession and um, just the, the survey that, that she pulled out. I, I want to tell you, I've heard a couple of those surveys and I thought to myself, oh, you know what? That might just be something that marketers do. Um, you know, that, that people that sell advertising put surveys like that out. But I, I've, if you do some research on that, there are hundreds of surveys about what happens to businesses that market during recessions or soft times as opposed to businesses who don't. And, and typically those business that, businesses that market heavily during soft times times in the economy skyrocket over their competition as things get better. And that that's proven over a lot of different surveys. So I think that's a really good point. Um, and then the other thing, you know, if make sure that your message is consistent. So Heather talked about social media. If you're advertising in the newspaper, if you're buying, live, uh, buying ads on our website, if you're doing, uh, doing ads on TV or radio, make sure that you're putting your links in so that we know that we can find you on social media. If you're doing email marketing too, you know, let, let us know or, and let your customers know where you are because we, we want to talk to you. Um, all right, so I'm going to um, pass over now to Tonda, who is going to talk to us about um, networking virtually. And um, I'm really excited about this. I think this is, again, something we all need to try to figure out. How do we do this? How do we network in a virtual fashion, especially now as things are changing? So um, Tonda? First thing you want to do is make sure your technology is up to date <laughs> and you're going to be able to be online to see everybody. So um, I, in fact, uh, jumped on about 20 minutes early only to find out that I didn't have the connection that I needed. And uh, so I was panicking, checking with uh, the host of the meeting, Heather, to say, uh, what's the uh, code? How do I get in? Da, da, da. So the first thing I always recommend to everybody is, you know, do a test run, make sure that your uh, network is up to speed and that um, you, uh, you do have the passwords and, you're, uh, and you have the technical capabilities of, of uh, getting on deck with everybody. It's always better to be early than late. Um, especially on the tech side i'm those of you that have known me for a long time i am perpetually tr keeping up with myself trying to get to uh irl in real life meetings and um oops i'm going to hit my timer so i don't go over my time um and um, the other thing you want to make sure you do too is to be sure to put yourself on mute those of you that attended the um, chamber um, mixer a couple weeks ago, I was surprised to learn and thank goodness for my coworker, Heather, who had my cell phone and was able to text me and say, uh, I can hear Joe in the background mixing cocktails, you may want to mute. So <laughs> it's amazing the uh, amount of noise that does get picked up even when you think you're being quiet. Uh, which brings me to the other point, uh, you want to make sure that your housemates um, uh, including your pets and children know that you are in a virtual meeting and to uh, try and isolate them, self-isolate them somewhere, maybe outside or taking a walk or something else. 
Also, try not to multitask while you're on the video. Um, it it's, can be pretty obvious when you're looking at someone uh, on the video to know that they are texting or reading or just in general not paying attention. And you clearly wouldn't be doing something like that in a face-to-face -face meeting. So give some thought to how it comes across. Um, one of the other things that I learned too was announce yourself when you begin to speak. Not everybody's technology keeps up with who's talking. And this is for a conference call or for video. Right now, I'm looking at the screen and I only see Crystal, Marty, Heather, Helen, and Katrina, I need to go across to see Cornelia. Hey, Cornelia, how you doing? And Cynthia and Amy and Rochelle and Regina and Heather uh, McThaney. So without cursoring across, um, I can't, I may not know you're there. So, um, and I may not recognize your voice. So it's wise to introduce yourself or say, hey, Tonda, it's me, Amy, and um, this is what I have to say. So um, keep that in mind. Um, also, during these crazy times, um, Marty and Heather both talked about contacting your clients that you have, and not only the people that you're working with currently, but people that maybe you haven't had a conversation with in a while. Uh, this could be an excellent time to just reach out and say, hey, uh, what do you think about all this uh, COVID business? Uh, you know, I had this situation where I reached out to a customer just to say, hello, I hope you're holding up okay. I sent him a text said, I hope you're holding up okay. Didn't say how you're doing, any of that. To Heather's point, people are COVID weary, but the response I got from the client was so welcome. They were just grateful to hear from me. On the other hand, I've reached out to some people and they're like, oh my God, I'm tearing my hair out because I'm so busy. So keep in mind that while you may have time on your hands, some people don't have time on their hands for even a minute. Um, you know, I can relate, and I'm going to pick on Cornelia Johnson at the moment. I know that the folks at the colleges and the high schools are really working in overtime to try and get ready and come up with a way to uniquely celebrate their graduates. So they've been working double time and trying to be creative. So this may not be a good time to chat with them or say, I, uh, you know, got a minute? Uh, no, I don't have a minute to do a thing. But she may be appreciating a text to just say, I'm really thinking about you. I know you're in overdrive. Let me know if there is something I can do. But try and keep those types of things in mind when you're reaching out. Um, update your social networks, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, if you do have the time this is a perfect time to make sure that you're up to date. Um, you could take the time to do some informational interviews with some people. And I'm using the term informational interviews because now could be a great time to connect with a business or a person that you've been trying to work with in the past, but they've been too busy. Um, and you know, not to sell anybody anything right now, because trust me, some people are just, you know, they, they can't even think about buying something. But to find out what they're up to, what their future looks like, how can you help, um, just the human contact has been, it's been amazing. Um, I had the opportunity, of course, like many of you watching television this time. And I was watching TV and I saw Charlie Burton doing a commercial that was just, it was really just heartwarming and neat. He was talking about when his grandfather uh, was in World War II and shut down the business. And, you know, it was much, you know, while you can't compare World War II to COVID-19, but the experience for some people is relative. I took a picture of him on my TV screen 
and just sent them a text and said, hey, I like your commercial, you're looking great. Please say hello to your mom and dad, who I've known for a long time. And he quite frankly, just sent back and said, wow, it's nice to hear from you, thank you. Um, so you can do simple things like that that make somebody feel good and just um, touch base. Um, the other thing to think about um, is checking, um, Googling yourself or Googling your business and uh, seeing what it says. Keep in mind that what, when you Google something, much like when I Google shoes, because that's what I Google a lot is shoes or outdoor gardening, stuff automatically pops up because that's my um, behavior pattern. I'm sure the tech people will tell you that, you know, uh, if, if I'm sure if, um, again, I'm picking on Cornelia, if Cornelia uh, looks on her screen, she sees stuff about Dell Tech all the time because that's what she's used to seeing where she's always checking on. So you might wanna ask a friend to Google your name or your business and see what they come up with so that you can then follow up and maybe update or fix something. Um, I spoke a little bit earlier about uh, dropping the usual greetings, you know, acknowledge that these are trying times and reaching out to just reaching out to check on you. Just check in. Think about it. Think about what you would like to hear from somebody on and maybe just take the time to pick up the phone and actually make that phone call instead of text uh, and leave a message. And, but also keep in mind that not everybody will have necessarily have the time for you that you have for them at this time. Um, I think I've touched on it. Um, Heather, I believe you're gonna send, I did put together some links uh, when I did my research for the talk and um, I put together some links. So I think Heather can share that with everybody um, for you to uh, check on. It's like six ways to work a room, seven steps to stand out in a networking event. You can apply some of these techniques to video conferencing um, and uh, work the room, how to be a star in a networking event. These will be helpful and you can make them applicable to um, video conferencing but keep in mind that video conferencing is very very similar to a live one show you're interested and make an effort to uh, make eye contact and have the right body language i'm going to throw it back to conrad thanks tonda um i think one of the things that um you said that i, I wanted to, to push on and 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 just kind of mention because Zoom is connected often to our social networks, um, you may have a Zoom name, and none of you do, but you may have a Zoom name that you don't want people to see. And so um, I have a friend whose Zoom name he's, he is Bernice, right? And his name is Sam Chauvet, he's from France, and we, we'll hang out, but his, his Zoom name is Bernice. And, so, and I have another friend whose Zoom name is Big Papa Moose. Right. And so in both cases, those are not professional names that they want when they're having a meeting. And so taking a couple of minutes, like Tonda said, just to make sure that your Zoom name is correct before you join a meeting, that your video is right, that I have a background here because um, I'm working in my garage. And so that may also be something that you want to do prior to getting on. Right. It's just making sure that you've done some of that work um, so that just in the same way that you're um, that you know, you're, you're um, be getting in a professional attire, you're also setting yourself up that way. So um, I, I wanted to look, it doesn't look like we have questions posted. So I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna talk about a couple questions we have and maybe we can do some answers there. And then if you guys have questions, you can certainly post them in the chat and we can address them. Crystal, how much time do we have? Um, we have about 10 minutes. Okay, great. Good. Okay. So that's great. And then um, I'll kick it back to you maybe at the end of that. Um, and and uh, so just a couple questions um, that that we had sent in and some of these I think are, are really good. Um, one is about Googling my my business, the Google My Business page. And, and Marty, I, I wanted to ask you this question. So um, with the Google My Business page, um, one, wh why is it important? And then two, 
is it easy to change? Like, is it just scraped information or, you know, can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, Google My Business page is, is, a, is, is a listing. There's a ton of listings out there. Uh, you know, YP.com has a listing. There's literally hundreds of listings. Yahoo has a listing. Um, but Google My Business for search is, is probably the most important because if it's, if it's claimed and you use it and have updated information, one, it's gonna help you when people do a search for your products and services. If you sell flooring and your store is in Dover and someone is looking for you know, flooring or, or carpet stores in, in Kent County, uh, you're having a Google My Business page that's filled out um, correctly, claimed, all that stuff, it's going to help you get found, first of all, by someone doing that search. It'll, it'll at least help boost you up the organic rankings, which is where you want to be. Because, you know, nobody goes to page four when they're doing a search. You know, I mean, it's put type in your search and whoever is right there, that's, you, that's generally who you uh, call or, or look up their website. So Google My Business is going to help you when people are doing searches. Secondly, it is, it's not scraped, it's, it's something you can put the information in. And so if someone isn't, you know, if they looked up your business, they, they, that means they didn't go to your website. But Google My Business can act as like a mini website, as I mentioned before. You can put uh, your hours and your offers and anything that's new or unique about your business. You have that ability uh, on your Google My Business and that will all come up um, when, when someone is doing a search. So those are, are two of the, you know, most important reasons. One is is for uh, you know helping you rise in the organic rankings and get yourself found, and two is to communicate with the customer when they do find you. All right. Yeah, absolutely. So I can pretty easily right now go in and change my hours on a Google My Business page if I wanted to. Is that right? I could go and yes, change names, absolutely. phone numbers, and all that stuff. Yep. Names, yeah. Good. Phone That's number, great. Hours. All all that stuff is, is once you once you have that claimed and, and verified, then yes, it's very easy to make those changes. Yep, and I, and I think to Heather's point earlier, if hours have changed, or even if they haven't, going into a claimed Google My Business page and saying updated hours, even if they haven't changed, right, so that people recognize, hey, I'm looking at this, I've paid attention to it. And my hours are updated as a result of this. I have found that recently, like doing searches, you know, and you have the hours show up and then it says COVID may affect this. And then you call and there's no one there. And, you know, I mean, there's those kinds of things. So I think it's helpful to have some of that updated. So that's good. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Heather, I'd love to ask you, and, and we had a question come in about hashtags. And I'm really interested, just what we see so many hashtags all over the place and, you know, whether they're important or not, or how, how do we think about that when it comes to social media and especially marketing? Okay, so hashtags, that what they're designed to do is help increase the readership um, of your, your posting, okay, and the engagement in your posts and on all the different social media platforms. Um, be sure and research a hashtag before you start using it. Um, make sure that that whatever comes up in in that particular social media platform with that hashtag is what you want your business associated with. So um, some of it you can just use your imagination a little bit and think, oh yeah, maybe I won't use that hashtag. So, um, but do check them out before you use them, and you should have some branded hashtags that you always use for your business that are always good to just always include for your business um, and just already have those and have them researched and everything. Um, Facebook, don't use hashtags at all on Facebook, okay? So you don't need them there. Instagram, you wanna try to limit it to about 10 plus or minus. You know, you see people on Instagram who put like 40 hashtags. Um, really about 10 plus or minus is all that you need on Instagram. And um, set them apart from your um, post a little bit, but don't put them in a separate comment or they don't, they're, they're not really as effective if you do something like that. So um, Twitter, about three or four branded hashtags, and you can put those in as part of your copy when you do that. 
Um, and you can also put on Twitter, put branded hashtags in your profile. And also um, Twitter will tell you what hashtags are trending right then too. So, um, but keep in mind if there's something that's, you know, got a really high number that your post is not going to stay at the top of that hashtag for very long. It's going to get moved down. But then also if you pick a hashtag that's only got like, you know, two or three people following it and only two or three things on there that you're not going to get much engagement that way either. So find a, a happy medium there. Um, Pinterest, um, if you use Pinterest for your business, really no more than about 20 um, relevant hashtags and it's good to put those in the copy. And then LinkedIn um, has just started uh, well, I don't know. They have they haven't always used hashtags, but they have they are using hashtags now. So probably about five hashtags. Be sure and put some of your branded hashtags in there um, when you use them, and they're okay to put at the they sh they're at the end of your copy. And again, a mix of branded ones and then maybe some others that are relevant to the message that you're putting there. So you know, all hashtags are just ways for you to you know, build that um, engagement and, and readership, viewership, whatever you want to call it for your social media. But um, again, be sure and research them and try to use branded hashtags to have a set group that you use regularly. That's great. Thanks, okay. Heather. Thanks, there is a, um, yeah, there, there's, so, so uh, after this, after we finish this, you all should look up Jimmy Fallon, and uh, Justin Timberlake and then Jimmy Fallon and uh, Jonah Hill have videos on hashtags and they're great. And, you know, it's just, a, it's a funny way to think about, to think about that. But I think it's, you know, uh, um, as we, sometimes we can overuse them, which is their point. Um, but I think as we're marketing and thinking about that, it's important to, to do some research and just remember, this is, this is a message that you are, relaying to your customers. And so you just wanna make sure that you're doing it in the best way possible. Um, and uh, yeah, that, so Rochelle has a good question. And um, I think maybe Heather, we can, and, and uh, Marty, this may be one you guys can, can kick on up together, but um, other than hashtags, what's a good way to increase your blog reviews on LinkedIn? So are there ways to do that organically or should we think about marketing for that? So either one of you. Okay. Um, so I can talk about that briefly. Um, I mean, really with, with doing blogs, it's just something that, yeah, you're going to have to market um, on all your different social media channels. And those are things that are going to just take a little bit of time to, to build up. Um, you, you know, something too that you might want to consider um, is if you're posting blogs regularly, which is, is a really good thing to do too, is to post it regularly, either on the same, you know, on the same day of the week anyway, and sharing that and kind of getting that consistent following that way. And so marketing it different ways, maybe you're, you do an email blast to your regular um, client list or whatever to kind of build that audience. The other thing too is it, you might consider doing a blog. Um, you know, surprisingly, well, maybe it's not surprising, but it was to me anyway, YouTube is, is the most used social media channel or platform of any, okay? So, and I know that there's a variety of things on there, but even doing a vlog and, it, and again, doing it the same time every week or the same day every week at the same time would be good too, or at least, you know, it's always in the afternoon or posted by three o'clock or whatever, that you can kind of build that audience. So um, yeah, it's just gonna take a variety of marketing, um, I would say. Marty, I don't know if you have any thoughts to add to that or not. Um, not, not really, um, I think you hit it on it uh, more important than anything is, is, is doing it regularly and, and adding to a blog uh, as much as you can. Um, the other thing, is is keywords is is right it's a little bit different type of writing but you're writing uh for seo content so you're looking for keywords and you want to make sure that uh the the topic of of your blog that the keywords all relate to that um and those words are mentioned uh fairly often not too much because then google will slap you down for 
for thinking, oh my gosh, I just inundated this and it's not really informational. So it needs to be informational, but there needs to be uh, a, a very good representation of, key, of keywords um, that, that associate with the topic um, that you want. And that'll help you build some, uh, some organic ranking just so that you'll get found more. Maybe not as effective as the marketing that Heather talked about. I think that's first and foremost, but these are just little things that can help uh, boost you a little bit as well. Right. Yeah. So I, I think Crystal's telling me that we're, we're close on time. And so I want to, I want to respect, respect that. Um, but I'd love to talk more. We'd all love to kind of talk more about this. This is something, you know, overall we have um, nine account executives that are all trained um, in, in Google AdWords. Um, all of our um, all of our managers to have some some knowledge here. So if you guys have questions and just want to kind of bat stuff around, you know, um, we would love to spend some time um, working with you. This is one of our favorite topics. So, um, Crystal, can I kick it back to you? Absolutely. Thank you all very very much for presenting. I actually learned a lot of things that I didn't realize I didn't know. So. <laughs> Um, we appreciate you guys being here so much. Um, as mentioned, this is recorded, so we're going to post it on our um, website and we'll also share it with you. Um, and everybody who wasn't able to be here will be able to watch it. So again, thank you all very, very much.